Hi guys, we're in the wake of a new eruption. They're saying it can happen right now, any day, definitely this week, is that what's their estimate? But also, the last eruption that was on January 14th has made incredibly more danger and more damage to the town of Grindavik. We want to look into this. There's news from the Natural Disaster Insurance and the number of homes that have been total damaged, totally damaged, are beyond repair. So have been declared as a total loss has increased significantly. It has been multiplied to what they have said before. Before the last eruption, it was 13 homes that were a total loss. So residents could expect to be paid out fully. For them, this is great. They get the money and, and they can go, right? They're not stuck with real estate in Grindavik anymore. But you know, what is the new damage that they have discovered after the eruption on January 14th? Let's talk about that just quickly before we talked about the new homes that they have declared a total loss. So guys, since we're in the middle of the video, could you do me a favor to push my channel a little bit? Could you leave this video a like and watch it till the end so that the algorithm grabs my video and, and pushes it out in the world? And leave me a comment. What do you think? Will there be an eruption inside of Grindavik or do you think it'll be further north than the last one? And what's your estimate? Do you think the Blue Lagoon is really in danger? That it might erupt right in there? Because the Blue Lagoon is, as always, right? It's still open. But thanks guys for supporting this video. Thumbs up. And let's get back to the video now. So the damage to the eastern part of Grindavik has increased significantly. So we have seen the most damage on the western side of Grindavik after the December 18th eruption. But now it's basically both sides. So also there is a new large sinkhole that has formed around the same time when the eruption began on January 14th. And also the fissures have opened and have caused more damage. And the industrial district in the eastern part of the town is in very bad shape because underneath, because of the second magma intrusion and eruption, the land has subsided there as well. The land did subside on the left, on the west side of Grindavik. So if you look at the map on the left side, right, the west side, there we already had the land subsiding at the maximum point, two meters. So the maximum point is there where the road, the main road, Grindavikovegur enters the town. So there we have up to two meters where the land has subsided. But now we have basically two of these sickle valleys where the land has subsided. And you know what that means if there's a structure on top of it. So it seems it has hit the industrial area as well. So this is not good right because that was basically where people were hoping even if they would not live in town again but they were basically hoping that they could keep the businesses open and people could go to work there and especially the port um there is no reports about the port in specific but the houses and the structures they have sagged and they were more damaged than they have been before December 18th and before November 10th when the problems initially started. So it's not looking good. So most homes are way much more damaged. And they already had one large sinkhole on November 10th that has formed in Glindavik and it has caused considerable damage to the town. and. But what they're now saying, because of the new eruption, the damage has multiplied and it just got a lot worse. And there's just so much damage in the eastern part. And the houses, some houses are not completely in ruins, but they have caved in. They did sink and they are all crooked and damaged. So to me, is that, that is um, completely in ruins because uh, if, if, 
if your foundation has sagged, the walls have cracked, they, they're leaning towards one side, they're crooked and damaged, uh, it's only a matter of time until they might collapse. And we're in, you know, we're just waiting for the next eruption that will probably come with another earthquake swarm and existing fissures and sinkholes might get larger or new ones might form again. So there'll be more damage to the town. And, but what are they doing? I mean, they're still assessing the damage. So <laughs> instead of waiting for the next eruption, since we know it's definitely going to come, um, they have started again to go in there and assess the damages as they already did after November 10th. But it's kind of a Sisyphus work because you go in there, you assess the damage, and then the next eruption comes with the earthquakes and the landscape completely changes. New, new damages, old damages got worse. And it, it, does it really make sense? So, but let's hear from 13 homes that they declared in early this earlier this year that they're declared uninhabitable this number has grown now to 53 homes that are a total loss and not only that so the natural disaster insurance of iceland has received in total 432 reports from residents that their homes are damaged due to the natural disaster that has happened in Gundavik that has happened like multiple times in Grindavik already. And just last week, they received eight more reports. So how many did they inspect? They're not really quick with inspecting. So they have inspected a total of 266 houses so far. Um, but also what they're saying, they're calling this like movables content. What's in the homes or around the homes or outside um, so 15 of those have been inspected um, but they still have to inspect 122 homes and the damages and 90 29 damages to movable items on properties and it is unclear right now when they will be able to inspect that and so the problem the problem is you know as i just said the next problem is coming so out of these 53 properties that are a total loss it's 30 residential properties but 23 commercial properties so let that sink in many people were hoping that the town might have a future at least commercially maybe thinking okay maybe we cannot live in the town for a while but maybe we can go and keep the businesses but 23 that's a lot for such a little town so also two movable um prop contents have been assessed as a total loss and what they're saying is now since they have these assessments they have gotten in touch with the owners and uh have already confirmed with them and told them that their properties are beyond repair. The natural disaster insurance says that it is very complicated to fully assess the properties in some cases, because in some cases, residential building that buildings that are considered to be beyond repair um, have garages attached to them or right next to the buildings. And these garages are less damaged and are therefore considered repairable. Um, so they haven't found a conclusion as to how they will handle these cases. But I mean, really sorry, guys. The main value lies in the home and not in a garage. That's a cheap, cheaper part of her home. And you know, you don't know how to handle that. I'm sorry if the home's a total loss and screw the garage. Sorry for my language, but what do they expect that people will live in their garages? And I mean, I think it comes down to that. Is the property a total loss? Is the plot of land where the garage and the home are standing? Can, can you rebuild there? Because what they're saying is they're only paying out 
they only pay out the residents so that they're free to leave if the plot of land is unusable for a very long time or forever. So they're not really saying out of these heavily damaged homes and commercial properties, how many of them have an unusable plot of land underneath. But I would assume quite many because as they have mentioned, the land has subsided, that they have caved in. So do they want to fill that up again and then build new? I don't think that makes sense because it, it could subside even more with the next eruption and then the eruption after that. So. They have already estimated that until it's getting more quiet in Grindavik, that could last 10 years. But cycles, what they know from the past, could last as long as like 20 to 30 years, and then it moves a little bit further here and there and there. Then the whole Rakhianis Peninsula can remain active up to 300 years. So I think a lot of plots are probably unusable. So they don't know how to handle that, but one thing they have made clear is that the events of January 14th have in many cases resulted in significant additional damage to the properties that they have previously assessed as partially damaged. And some of them are now a total loss. So they say because of that, it is not realistic to submit a damage assessment of partially damaged property until there has been an opportunity to assess the effects of the eruption and the earthquakes in January. Well, good luck with this because we've got the next one coming. And because of the fact that these eruptions keep coming, I wanted to give you a quick update about the investigation of the man that fell into the crack. So what the workers um, entity, the workers union has basically said, they did not go in there and investigate the accident site because basically the site of the accident has completely changed by now because they stopped the search. And then shortly after we saw the eruption on January 14th and everything was rumbled and cracks are getting longer and who knows what the Swiss cheese underneath, how it has changed. And so like the, the site of the accident looks completely different and I don't think there's much left to investigate, uh, but we will see the family um, of the man has definitely demanded that there will be a thorough investigation and the police is already investigating it and they're treating it basically as a like a crime scene right they're investigating in all directions the eruption is imminent people have been let back into town today it was a thousand people yesterday it was 1200 people and they have kind of the rescue teams have kind of observed what people are taking from their properties. And so they're saying some people take everything, like really everything in the home, all their belongings, furniture, everything that they can. Um, and he, they, they think that's probably 10% of the people that they have let into town. And that's what the deputy fire chief of Grindavik is saying. His name is Petor Benediktsson. He also says that getting the valuables out of Lindavik has worked pretty well the last two days. And he says it's not a large number of people who are taking their entire property, but there are definitely a number of people who are taking sofas and beds or something that just needs to go into another home. And yeah, that makes sense because you don't want to buy everything new. Many people maybe still live with relatives or in vacation homes, Airbnb and stuff like this. So you don't want to buy everything new. But on the other hand, you really have to consider, and that's my opinion, guys, if we have the next eruption imminent, is it worth to risk your life and go back in there just for some furniture? Um, I, I'm always of the opinion, and you know that, guys, better be safe than sorry. I think they, by now, they should stop. Because just today they said the magma accumulation underneath Swartzangi has reached about 9 million cubic meters. So the same amount that we almost had before the January eruption. 
so eruption is imminent. They expect it at any time and they expect it with little warning because the tunnels are already there. So the magma will not have to create a new pathway. It can flow into the existing ones and therefore um, it can hide the intrusion a little bit longer until it erupts. So that's the danger right now. And they cannot say for sure where the next eruption will be. Now they expect it further north than the last eruption, but you know, can they really say that it's not further south inside of Gendavik? They just said a few days ago, it could happen inside of Gendavik and also inside the Blue Lagoon. So why don't you close that, um, all that down? Let's get back to the Grindavik fire chief. Um, he was asked in an interview, what's his estimate? How does he think that um, the people that he sees that come to collect their valuables, what does he think? How is their well-being? Um, and he says that most people are, of course, very sad. And as time passes it it's just getting harder for them and but he says he's not sure about how many of them will not return so he kind of thinks that people might return and that more people might want to return to live in the town um he says many may change their minds when everything starts to calm down um yeah but the estimates are 10 years so yeah you might change your mind but in a time frame of 10 years i mean you've built a life somewhere else or maybe he's still hoping that with the coming eruption everything will end and the land rise underneath short sangi will stop and the magma chamber will basically not refill and then also, they need to hope that all of the other volcanic systems remain quiet and that there's not more magma chambers that might cause an eruption that might run towards Grindavik. So um, the fire chief himself has lived in Grindavik for a long time. And, and he says he might consider moving back to Grindavik when the opportunity comes. Um, he's now in Rakhianis Bear. So, he says it's a battle between him and his wife, and but he says the decision will definitely be made um, by both of them. And uh, yeah, so the town is closed for everyone else. It's only open for residents that have reserved time slots, but um, today they allowed um, a journalist and a photographer from one Icelandic newspaper to go into Grindavik, um, but he was accompanied by the communications director of the public defense and by a police officer. They were not allowed to follow residents and film them or document um, when they're taking out their valuables. So that was not allowed. So yeah, guys, the problem is even if they want to come back to Grindavik, what are they coming back to if the damages get more and more and more and the land subsiding there i think that's a major problem and i don't think it's that easy to just say we repair the homes or we rebuild um i don't it is sad but i don't really see a bright future for grindavik um, in the near future. I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong. It's such a beautiful, neat town that it, it's it's just so sad to see that. But uh, on the other hand, people need to have a perspective and they need to be able to move on. So I hope that after this coming eruption, that there will be time that the natural disaster insurance can really finish their assessments and then make a decision who's getting paid and who's not. And it's still everything's still up in the air. The residents have demanded that um, the government will pay them out and buy their homes out. But no final decision has been made as of yet because it's complicated. The natural disaster insurance says, oh, we don't want to pay for damages to come from frozen pipes or something. Although the pipes are frozen because the main power line 
like the heat pipe that comes from the Schwarzenegger power plant into Grindavik was damaged because lava was flowing over it. And of course, the natural disaster insurance has a back insurer. And you know how it is with insurance companies. Nobody wants to pay the bill. So it's definitely, it'll remain interesting. The whole peninsula is rumbling. So guys, stay tuned for more updates. They will come soon. And until then, check out the two videos in the end screen. And it would be awesome if you could leave this video a like, guys. Um, thank you so much for that. And I hope I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.